più di un mezzo millennio fa, il 28 maggio 1509, a soli 46 anni, a Firenze, moriva Caterina Sforza. Oggi, il 28 maggio 2021, 512 anni dopo, a Imola, la sua memoria si è resa più viva che mai. E non perché era mai stata dimenticata, anzi, ma parlando almeno per me, è come se l'avessi incontrata per la prima volta solo ora. Avendola sempre sentita nominare, pur conoscendola per il nome. Già, un personaggio così affascinante che viene quasi da chiedersi come mai non l'avessi visto così prima? Forse sarà una nuova missione della Madonna Caterina, tornata in una veste moderna. O forse perché sono io o noi che abbiamo ritrovato un paio di occhi nuovi per vederla, sì, parlare del passato, ma non solo. E soprattutto per dire che quel passato lontano c'entra anche con il nostro presente e con il futuro e che è più attuale che mai, come si sta già dimostrando, si è dimostrato in questa prima edizione di Caterina's Day. Oggi finalmente eh, condividerò con voi il video del workshop in inglese Caterina and Bona Sforza, Connecting Europe's Past and Present. Anche so ormai un po' parte del passato, anche se ancora un passato prossimo, ma già riguardando le immagini e riascoltando le parole dette il 9 maggio, provo sensazioni diverse, perché ciò che allora erano solo le idee di un programma, un qualcosa di ancora astratto, ora sono una realtà tangibile, bella, piena di vitalità. E grazie al tempo clemente e la situazione d'emergenza in netto miglioramento, tutto ha permesso sì che l'evento diventasse veramente ancora um, migliore di quanto si avesse potuto immaginare. Mi sa che siamo tutti rimasti stregati dal fascino di Caterina Sforza e già pieni di nuove idee e energie per il futuro. E quando dico tutti, eh, intendo in prima persona e noi soci di Imola Experience, eh, Ideas in Action che eh, con grande eh, onore ha contribuito a questo grande evento e a tutti coloro che si sono messi in gioco, eh, i volontari, eh, le associazioni, eh, tanti, tante, tante persone che hanno vissuto questo evento e, e ora a voi l'incontro internazionale del 9 maggio. Buona visione. E scusate per qualche imperfezione. Oh, this is a very important friend coming from joining us from London. Uh, Maurizio Patti, he is the guide of the guides, a great friend, uh, and he's here. His presentations are fantastic. So. Okay, I wish he were doing the presentation. He would definitely give you a good one, but maybe he will um, next year. Hello and um, a warm welcome to all of you connecting from Imola, from other parts of Italy and from abroad. Thank you for joining us today for the Caterina and Bona Sforza Connecting Europe's Past and Present event brought to you by Centro di Lingue, Cultura e Spettacolo, Ideas in Action and the Associazione Eredità Memoria as part of this first year's edition of Caterina's Day, alla corte di Caterina Sforza. First of all, I'd love to express our gratitude to Imola Experience, the association that stands behind the idea and the 
realization of Katerina's day and say a few words about the event itself, an event that has inspired and brought together a myriad of other associations and organizations who have embraced this opportunity with enthusiasm, joined forces, passions, talents, expertise, and given the uncertainty of the times, have shown great courage and boldness to go ahead against the odds and make this event a success. It started as an idea at a grassroots level, a dream turned into reality through action and collaboration, spiced up with a great sense of community and was later embraced by the city's administration and its cultural institutions as an official city event, taking the city by storm and is here to stay. Due to the uncertainties and restrictions imposed by the pandemic, the first two Sundays are being held online, almost a blessing, I'd say, because these first conferences and workshops set the stage, inform, and share the treasures that will be accessible at any time now, be it as a base for the rest of the event or afterwards, and hopefully inspire new entries for the future editions of Katarina's Day. This year is just like an appetizer yeah. to tickle the senses, una specie di aperitivo culturale per sollecitare i sensi, and we are yeah. happy to contribute to this colorful and multifaceted puzzle. Let's begin our event now. My name is Dorota Kulaviak, and I'm the founder and director of Ideas in Action, as well as one of the founding members of Eredita e Memoria. May 9th is Europe Day, and this is a small celebration of our common European heritage however diverse it may be. Just like in nature's biodiversity, where a greater diversity ensures natural sustainability for all life forms, also the European Union's motto, United in Diversity, one of the EU's symbols, along with the blue flags sprinkled with golden stars and Beethoven's Ode to Joy anthem, strives to make us all richer and better off. We too believe that together is better, and we invite you to join us, embraced by this European spirit. We have some special guests with us from Poland today, but before we give them the floor, I would like to begin in a bit of unplanned way, unplanned yet considered a real godsend, as it um, in a way embodies the topic of Ona Sforza, of our event today and the beauty of European relations. Uh, the short video is in Italian, um, unfortunately for those who don't speak it, um, and it features a short um, account, a short video of an Erasmus project uh, that was done in a neighboring uh, city um, near Imola, uh, Faenza, and it was dedicated to Pona Sforza. Uh, the Queen of Poland and the Grand Duchess of Lithuania. Gli studenti dell'Istituto Oriani della Quarta B, indirizzo Sistemi Informativi Aziendali, partiranno la prossima settimana per Cracovia a conclusione di un progetto Erasmus storico-scolastico durato due anni. Il tutto è iniziato nel 2015 quando i ragazzi hanno iniziato ad approfondire vicende che riguardano la casata degli Sforza, praticamente sconosciute in Italia. La storia di Bona Sforza, figlia di Gian Galeazzo Maria Sforza e Isabella d'Aragona che fatta sfuggire in tenera età a Napoli, diventa sposa di Sigismondo I di Polonia e madre di Sigismondo II secondo, sotto il cui regno la Polonia raggiunse l'apice della propria cultura rinascimentale. Una vicenda complessa, avvolta ancora oggi nel mistero, con morti non ancora chiarite che coinvolge Italia, Polonia e Lituania. Dopo un primo scambio culturale con gli studenti lituani della città di Rokiskis, avvenuto durante lo scorso anno scolastico e una rappresentazione teatrale, i ragazzi dell'Oriani hanno quindi realizzato una mostra alla Biblioteca Manfrediana dedicata ai principali protagonisti di questa particolare storia, prima appunto di concludere la propria esperienza in Polonia. Il progetto è iniziato nel 2015 grazie al, alla volontà e all'impegno della nostra professoressa Anna Rita Visani, eh, titolare della disciplina di storia, 
Eh, il progetto ha coinvolto tre nazioni, eh, la Lituania, la Polonia e l'Italia. Eh, questo progetto ha coinvolto anche il Consiglio di classe, che è, questo progetto ha anche come obiettivo quello di stimolare i ragazzi con lo studio di una disciplina che al giorno d'oggi non è molto studiata, come quella di storia. Tuttavia resta una fondamentale finestra sul mondo. Erasmus in questo senso ci ha consentito anche se in modo più ampio eh, di avvicinarci a contenuti che vengono da due lembi distanti del mondo uh -huh. come l'Italia e la Polonia. Questo progetto, come tutti i progetti Erasmus, vengono finanziati dall'Unione Europea. È una bella occasione per incontrare nuove culture e realtà, eh, altrimenti non sarebbero possibili incontrare. Il progetto si traduce anche in una mostra che avete realizzato alla Biblioteca Manfrediana. Come è strutturata questa mostra? Sì, effettivamente abbiamo realizzato uno script, cioè un, copia, un copione impiantato sulla storia dei tre personaggi principali che uniscono i tre paesi. Bona Sforza, Regina Consorte di Polonia per l'Italia, Sigismondo II per la Polonia e Barbara Ratzinwil per la Lituania. A questo proposito abbiamo fatto un'esposizione presso la Biblioteca Manfrediana di Faenza dove sono mostrati tre manichini simbolizzanti tre personaggi con i loro costumi rinascimentali rifiniti secondo le testimonianze dell'epoca. Questi costumi sono molto preziosi, sono stati realizzati in Lituania e trasferiti in Italia in seguito al nostro viaggio in Lituania, realizzato dalla nostra classe la quarta Bissia nell'ottobre scorso. È stata una bella occasione di confronto e di crescita sia umana che culturale e secondo me il lato migliore dell'Erasmus è proprio questo continuo scambio culturale e di socializzazione con altre culture culture diversi dalla nostra. Come classe adesso andrete a intraprendere un viaggio a Cracovia, parlaci un attimo di questo viaggio. Sì, dal 4 all'8 aprile andiamo, andremo in viaggio di istruzione appunto in Polonia, a Cracovia, un tempo capitale del regno e al tempo di buona sforza il cuore pulsante di diffusione della cultura rinascimentale italiana. E ne approfitteremo per visitare la città come il Castello Reale del Wawel, eh, e le miniere di sale, il ghetto ebraico e così via e passeremo anche una mattinata in una scuola, in un liceo eh, con i cui ragazzi abbiamo intrapreso un piccolo progetto di twinning appunto un gemellaggio elettronico tra scuole europee e in questa occasione ne approfitteremo per presentare Faenza quindi le sue tradizioni, i suoi piatti tipici e i luoghi di svago. Eh, il penultimo giorno ci faremo sfuggire l'occasione per andare a visitare Auschwitz-Birkenau anche in vista del nostro prossimo programma di studio che ci avvicina all'esame. Federico Leg, per Faenza Web TV. Now you have, a, a, at least for the Italian speakers, you have an idea just um, of, of how important the European spirit and how important the European relations are Um, and how much you can learn. I will give the floor now to the co-host of our event, the deputy chair, la vicepresidente, and another founding member of the Associazione Eredità Memoria, a longtime friend and a real kindred spirit in this European endeavor, Professoressa Angela Riccomi. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Dorota for your friendship. Hello. Hello, everyone. I am Angela Riccomi. I am the teacher of Ereditai Memoria. Our association participates in this event with full agreement on the value of historical remembrance, in particular of the relationship between Italy and Poland during the last world, uh, world war. We strongly believe in the involvement of schools and young people, even of our present through history. An example is the Etwinning partnership between students from my school. Uh, I am a French, a French teacher, not English, but <laughs> and students from a Polish school in Jagan in 2009 to get to know their own culture the students had the task of introducing each other to an important figure from their own city. The Italian pupil students chose Caterina Sporta. Um, the Polish partners presented Dorothée de Tairan, princess, princess of Jagan, of German origin but married to a French nobleman. We can already say that there is a piece of Europe in this two stories 
of charismatic and fascinating women who in different eras left their mark. Alongside them is Bona Scorza, with a strong character like her aunt Caterina, who, through her marriage to Sigismond the Elder, brought the peculiarities of the Italian Renaissance to Poland. A common heritage also expressed by our Sforza's women, which, despite our diversity, unites us today and is in line with the spirit of this day, Europe Day. So, good continuation. <laughs> we also, as I said, we have guests from Warsaw. Uh, it's a town called Yusefov, not far from Warsaw. And um, it's a friend, uh, a teacher, Agnieszka Tabisz and her class, actually it's not a class, it's the history club, um, children who um, meet every week uh, to do extra uh, hours of history. So real history lovers who uh, follow their teacher um, in their passion. They um, are all like in prima media, let's say. Kochani, włączmy kamerki. Właśnie, pokażmy nasze buzie wszystkim członkom spotkania. We can say something about us. We are a group of people, young people, who are keen on history. And we organized a club of history in primary school. And there are students of six class um, in Józefów, uh, 20 kilometers uh, from Warszawa. And uh, we are interested in uh, medieval history and also as uh, history of the Second World War. So um, today um, we prepared a, a, a presentation. Anya and Emilka would like uh, to um, show uh, presentations uh, about uh, Queen Bona. <laughs> Is Anya going to make her presentation or would she like me to help her? Anya? So what, um, what I would like to say, um, okay, it would be much easier to make a presentation ourselves, but just to give this, what we're trying to promote is this cultural exchange and um, really giving uh, the children and students an, an opportunity uh, to do um, and to participate in such events, even if they may not be perfect. And um, uh, they are here to, uh, you know, I'm sure we will begin um, a future presentation because uh, with um, Agnieszka Tavish, actually, uh, she is a history teacher, uh, a friend, and soon will be a partner uh, in a new project that we're launching. She is a granddaughter of the commanding officer of the Carpathian Lancers of the Second Polish Corps, um, Lieutenant Colonel Stanisław Wyskota Zakrzewski, who was one of those who helped liberate Italy and our area. So uh, I wanted to, to say this because we met on the occasion when we were commemorating the Second Polish Corps, and we would like to uh, connect um, on different levels, on different topics. And uh, so we, we connected just very recently. That's why uh, the kids made their presentation in no time um, and uh, they're happy to share. So even if they are not perfect, you just have to be patient and you have yes, the, the presentations like are perfect because they worked very hard. Okay, so I think we are ready. Hmm? We are ready to start the Anya. Are you going to do it? Or Anya Malinowska from Yusefuf History Club. Um, Warsaw, Poland, because I promised them that I would um, uh, I would help 
uh, I would help them uh, and maybe read the slides. Mm? So I don't know, would you like me, Anya, would you like to do part of it or would you like me to do it? Pani może czytać. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, I was asked for help. Okay, so Katerina Sforza. Um, Katerina Sforza, so I'm reading what they prepared. Katerina Sforza was an Italian aristocrat, the Duchess of Furli, a natural daughter of Galeazzo Maria Sforza, the Duke of Milan, and Lucrezia Landriani. What was Caterina Sforza called? In Italy, she was called in various ways. For the people, she was the bravest of women in Italy. A Venetian poet called her the Tigress of Forlì. A document from the city of Imola speaks of her as a bloodthirsty and tyrannical woman. And the cardinals, led by, by Pope Alexander VI, described her as the daughter of iniquity. So many different, <laughs> different views of Caterina. The children of Caterina Sforza. Caterina had eight children uh, with her first husband, Girolamo Riario. She had six, Bianca Riario, Ottaviano Riario, Caesar Riario, Giovanni Livius, Galeazzo Riario, Francesco Riario, called Sforzino. With her second husband, she had one son, Bernardine Feo Carla. Uh, with her third husband, she also had one, one son, Lodovico, known as Giovanni dalle Bande Nere. You may probably see here some discrepancies with the names. Uh, some of the names are in English, some of the names are in Italian. Uh, but here we have you know, all these materials and the res research is being done, was, was done from Poland in English. Uh, so that, that I think also makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, also, um, I would like to just add something. The children of Caterina Sforza, the children of Bona Sforza. I think today we could also look at these two women as mothers. Today is Mother's Day in Italy. And so um, uh, maybe one of the, uh, one of the aspects, um, they had a lot of children and um, uh, probably, you know, uh, shared uh, the difficulties made different times 500 years ago, but a mother is a mother in any time in any country. And Bona Sforza had fewer children because unfortunately with her last son, she fell off the horse and couldn't, uh, she, was, she was expecting. And after that, she couldn't have any more children, but she herself had six, so uh, quite a few. Bona Sforza. Uh, now, before uh, starting to speak about the queen, um, uh, the, the students wanted to emphasize uh, maybe uh, the, the heritage uh, and things that uh, we owe to her as a queen. And Queen Bona was very keen on the development of Poland. She brought a lot of artists from Italy. Thanks to this, a new era was created in Poland, the Polish Renaissance. In Polish, it's called the Golden Age. Many beautiful monuments are from those times. And here, um, the, the castle of Wawel in Krakow, which for a long time was the residence. It's the uh, of kings and queens of Poland. And Sigismund's, her husband's, uh, chapel. Who was Bona Sforza? Bona Sforza from 1518, the Queen of Poland and the Grand, Grand Duchess of Lithuania, the Duchess of Bari and Rossano. She was the wife of Sigmund Stare, Sigismondo 
Elbeck, uh, the Old and the mother of Sigmund, uh, Sigismondo or Sigismund, Sigmund August and Anna Jagiellonka. Wedding with Sigmund Stare, uh, Sig, uh, Sig, Sigismund uh, the Old. The first attempts of marriage were unsuccessful, but thanks to the support of the Habsburgs, it was possible to marry her with the to marry her with the Polish king Zygmunt Stary. Bona's wedding and the coronation ceremonies took place in Krakow on the 18th of April, 15 and um, 18, uh, but the celebration, I think, lasted for the following six or seven days. So the day was 18th of April, but it continued. Queen Bona's education. In her youth, Bona received a thorough education. She learned to express herself in a scholarly manner and also had knowledge of history, law, administration, and theology. She learned several languages and was an economical person. She, um, house economics was an important matter uh, for her thrifty and this, at the same time able to influence people. Okay, I think this is the end. Okay, nope. Queen, what were the goals of Queen Bonas as a queen? From the beginning of her stay in Poland, uh, Queen Bona tried to gain a strong political position. In foreign policy, she was a fierce opponent of the Habsburgs and a supporter of closer alliance with France. So uh, Poland at the time and the Duchy of Lithuania. The Queen's moves or moving. In 1544, Sigmund II August, her son, took independent power in Lithuania and therefore moved there. This was the cause of the Queen's power. This conflict of interest led to Bona and her daughters moving to Bari in 1556. Death of Bona Sforza. A year after returning to the Principality of Bari, Bona Sforza was poisoned by her trusted courtier Jan Wawrzyniec Papakoda. Uh, here we have the Polish uh, name, uh, but he was Italian. Well, it was the period of uh, um, a lot of people, you know, it was a, a interest, money, power. Uh, and uh, yeah, she supposedly uh, lost her life because uh, she was poisoned. And she wasn't the first, the only one. Well, um, the girls, or Anya, wanted to um, emphasize um, the, the diversity of opinions, different points of view about the queen. And um, um, I think that this matter is so uh, vast that today is just, uh, how to say, just a taste of what uh, is to be uh, learned, and I think we are today is just the beginning, uh, maybe of what we will bring in the future also. So anyway, the opinions about Bona Sforza are divided. Some say some identify Bona with uh, with these uh, words: bribery, greed, intrigue, and uh, the others uh, think of her like this, nice, kind, cultural. So uh, how do we could say two different faces of the medal, okay? So uh, a definitely a controversial person, but also considering the fact that she was a woman uh, in power uh, at the times that women really um, didn't uh, have too much power or were not given um, a lot of power, and I think this is something that um, was true also about Katerina Sforza. 
Oh, here we have um, the children of Bona Sforza and Zygmunt started Isabella, Jagiellonka, Sofia, Katarzyna, Katerina, uh, Zygmunt, uh, Anna. And um, here it marks the, the son in uh, Polish, but I think it was a foreign origin of the name Olbracht is Adalberto uh, Wojciech, I think. So uh, mm, it was the second male um, heir to the throne, but unfortunately he was still born because of this fall. So uh, great despair, great despair uh, of that. Common traits and interests of Caterina and Bona. Well, they were both Italian, both women, well, well educated. Uh, they knew international relations and loved horseback riding. I'm sure being two Sforzas, they had a lot more common traits, but I think we can leave that for the future. So Caterina and Bona here. Thanks for your attention. Right, so that was Anya. Thank you. We have another presentation, but uh, uh, so if you, uh, if somebody would, would like to say something or to comment, please unmute. So I will just get the second presentation ready. Okay, anyone? Uh, Agnieszka, would you like to, you as a history teacher, would you like to add something? Uh, I would like to say that uh, we are proud of uh, Queen Bona. <laughs> uh, although she was Italian, but she um, learned Polish and she uh, wanted to um, uh, have a um, Mm, real uh, role in uh, Poland. Uh, she was an uh, um, helper, uh, advisor of uh, her uh, well, um, um, husband. Hi, this is Gigi. I'm turning in from the USA and oh. I have studied Katarina for several years as an independent scholar. Um, and I just recently actually found a book on her um, and also includes information on Bona and her trip from, you know, being an Italian woman to becoming um, a noble in Poland. So I'll put the name of that book in the chat in case anyone else who speaks English wants to read more in-depth history that's written in English on Bona. Oh, fantastic. So could you just uh, say it again? Are you studying Katerina? Is that what you're, what you're yes. doing? Oh. Yes, I'm an independent scholar. So I've written a couple of books translating her recipes. I'm mostly interested in alchemy and books of secrets. So I've studied her experimenty. Wow, fantastic. We should, we should, well, the, the event, as I mentioned, is um, uh, we should stay in touch definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And um, because, uh, as I said, Katerina's day, it's, um, it will be will become an annual event and just maybe a few minutes of um, half an hour ago we had um, uh, there was another workshop uh, dedicated to um, Katerina's love and interest uh, of alchemy and and uh, uh, studies medical um, the, the use of medicine of uh, herbs in medicine. Could you say something about that? I mean, like you just mentioned that. Uh, well, actually, I am going to work with a friend of mine who is in uh, Bologna to look at the recording of that because I don't speak fluent Italian. I actually, because I've been studying 15th century Italian manuscripts, I can read that Italian, but of course, it's vulgar mixed with Latin. It's not like modern Italian. Um, but I'm very interested to learn from the workshop that you just mentioned. In my studies, I found that Katerina was just fascinated with herbal medicine, right? She was a beautiful woman. She wanted to retain that, just like women today want to retain the positive features that they have as they get older. But she also cared about other women. She's known, um, we know that she would use some of her herbal remedies to help sick women in her town. Um, and that's very different from what we think of a noble woman being so high above uh, the people that she serves. But Katerina, I think, um, had a huge heart. So she not only used this information 
um, for her own intellectual stimulation and gratification. She wrote letters to alchemists and herbalists and apothecaries all over Italy to get information from them for her experimenty, but she also used them to help actual practical people. Wow, thank you so much. And if we can be of help, oh, um, I suppose I you you joined the, the workshop through email, right? Did you register? Yes, yes. Okay, so we are in touch. Uh, if I, we can be of any help, if I can be of help, if I can put you um, in touch with people, um, that it would be a great, great pleasure. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, <laughs> grazie mille. Grazie mille. Connection, fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I'm really fortunate. I feel so happy. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to um, now uh, invite you to a castle. Uh, and this is part of the second presentation and it was done by Emilka. But we will start with the video. It's uh, the video is in English. It's um, this one of the castles uh, that Bona inherited after her husband's death. It was in the, I think the Duchy of Dovia. Um, the Duchy of Mazovia, um, and um, when she arrived, when she uh, really put a lot of work in making it um, a beautiful place, but also uh, she added a lot of her talents and especially um, something, the touch of uh, uh, being Italian and, and loving Italian vegetables and Italian, having uh, Italian gardens. And that's what she did um, at the castle in, uh, in Chersk. So I will first show you the video. Um, it's in English already, so. Another person connected with Chersk is Queen Bona Sforza, who came from Italy. In 1526, after the sudden death of the childless Prince Janusz III, the region of Mazovia became part of Poland. Following the death of her husband, King Sigismund the Old, Bona received land in Mazovia and Czersk Castle. An energetic ruler, she managed her properties in a modern way, opening breweries, a famous cloth makers, and workshops. She revitalized mills and agriculture and cultivated virgin land. During her reign, the castle was extended to a truly impressive size. Legend has it, that Queen Bona brought with her the seeds of plants that Poles call Italian vegetables. In fact, carrots and parsley were grown in Poland before her time, but her influence and her newly imported leeks and celery transformed Polish cuisine. On the sunny slopes around Czersk Castle, the Queen decided to plant a vineyard and ordered fruit and vegetables to be grown. Historical sources mention that the area was famous for its crops, the river valley having fertile soil and a superb microclimate. The exquisite taste and quality of Czersk's natural produce meant that it was always in high demand at the royal residence in Warsaw. Connection with the Medici family and, uh, and the um, Maria de' Medici um, and then uh, um, the Catherine Medici was um, Maria Medici was uh, Rita Maria's mother who married the Charles the First Stuart. So it's a very very weak connection, but maybe there is. So between Caterina and um, and so uh, the school of Orafi uh, yeah, and yes. uh, they um, they joined uh, this incredible project and they had um, designed and made um, jewels with symbols with the symbols of Imola. Um, I still oh. don't know uh, what they made but there will be an exhibition so uh, now we, we are just warming up the engines and the real event will start uh, next week next week and for the following three Sundays. Caterina stayed in Imola for one week, um, just kind of uh, taking um, or, or becoming familiar uh, with the city that she would later become a lady of and then sort of the lady of Imola, the Countess of Forli. 
um, and she was, so that happened um, in, on the 1st of May, 1477. Um, mm -hmm. And Katarina was welcomed by, uh, by the people, by the citizens of Imola uh, with songs, with dances. So she was very happy. I think there are some accounts of, uh, of letters to her sister uh, saying how beautiful uh, it was. And then at, at that age, she was 14 years old. She was joining her husband in Rome uh, where she stayed for several years uh, to make a return uh, to Imola um, and then to Forli. And the story is very, very complex. And I think uh, I welcome everyone to investigate and hopefully we can, we can meet uh, for another episode uh, um, um, next year, but I will try to also update this account in English, make it you know, sim simplify it, but not oversimplify it um, about Katerina. Last week, we had a, a very simple mm -hmm. workshop in English yeah. for children, but still, you know, it's, there is so much um, to know and um, it, it really takes experts who, um, and scholars who know, uh, who know history, who know these people who can really weave a beautiful story. So uh, hopefully in the future, um, we, can, we can invite them and have these sessions uh, in English uh, for the English speaking people, okay? But um, meeting with experts who can really uh, show these two characters and all the other um, aspects, especially the aspect that Gigi um, Gigi, can we book you for next year? Would you like to join us? And I apologize because I said New York, but it's New Orleans. I yes, think she's. Yes. <laughs> no um, apology necessary. I would love to be involved next year, not only to learn more from people who actually live there and are, have access to primary source documents, but also to share what I've learned. Absolutely. 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 Wonderful. And having, I know that there is a lot of work, um, um, many scholars studying Katerina Sforza, um, especially gender related studies. So um, getting that aspect and, and getting ready uh, to present that or to have uh, guest speakers next year, it's one of our goals, I think. Okay. Um, anybody else? I wanted to, to thank the students as well, because they were brilliant, really very good. Yeah, I mean, their yeah. presentation and yes, I, I tell you the secrets, they did it in like no time. The question was asked the day after the president presentation was ready. Machajmy wszystkim uczestnikom. Can we? They listen to their okay. teacher. You have a great. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. Okay, Anya. So Anya made the presentation. I spoke with Maya. Zuza, thank you also for dedicating your time because we met yesterday. You worked on it in your own time. You're meeting us. You spent um, one hour and a half with us today so i hope that your little sacrifice will pay off one day and that we can host you uh you can be guests in imola in italy okay everybody and overall um to those uh, who followed uh, from uh, scotland uh, uh, from Bologna, Giuliana Rossi, uh, she was interesting in that. And uh, from France, uh, in the day of Europe, in the Europe Day. Uh, so, thank you so much. And uh, arrivederci dall'Italia. Okay, a presto. Bye.